Oh yeah. <sighs> Look at this uh, beauteous picnic spot here. Welcome to Japan, as we say in Japan. Buongiorno, which we don't say in Japan, but you could say it. I just said it in Japan, didn't I? I am uh, enjoying a beautiful pre-summer day. I'm in a park. I brought my little chair with me, a tiny table. I had some convenience food. I had an onigiri and I had a whole bunch of little snacks and I had a carton of milk because I'm a weirdo like that. Okay, I like milk. And it, it, I just thought this would be such a nice place to kind of catch up with you guys for the Kinkogi quest this month. Welcome to anybody that's new. There's been a lot of new people that have said, oh, I'm new to this channel, subscribed, and that's really exciting. I don't want to brag, but this community is amazing. They are so wonderful, open-minded, lovely, understanding. If you have any questions, you know, ask the questions to me. Other people might answer them. It's just a really nice, a lovely space, is what I'd say, here in the Kinkogi village. I am so distracted because there is the cutest little dog behind the camera right now. You guys don't even know. I must lure it with my mind. <laughs> Are you on an adventure? Yes, you're on such a good adventure. It's nice out, isn't it? It is so nice out today. I know. I know. Well, you have fun, okay? Yeah. You can go have fun, okay? No? You're gonna stay a little longer? Oh, itchy ears. Itchy ears. Oh. All right, go enjoy your walk, huh? Yeah. You go enjoy your walk. You enjoy your walk. Go on. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, we just had a little chat. If you join me for the last King Kogi quest, I was discussing how I had a lot of things that I was planning and things that I wanted to do. And hopefully now you've had the chance to see my most recent video, the Tokyo Tours one. And that's what I was organizing and planning and trying to figure out, you know, how do I want to share my experience of Japan with you guys? <laughs> Air conditioners everywhere. They're so square. There's something weird in my eye. Uh. As you know, I really love exploring. Um, kind of just like getting lost and stumbling across things and finding things. I think that's a lot more exciting and satisfying than, you know, constantly planning a place that you want to go to and not enjoying the journey along the way. I think the important part about life is enjoying everything along the way, even if you're waiting in line for the bus and then now you're on the bus and you know, you're aiming to go somewhere. I think all of that counts as part of your journey. You don't necessarily know what you're going to find, right? So when I make a Tokyo tour video, I don't, know how the filming is going to go that day in the sense that I pre-planned it, I've organized it, I know the neighborhood, I know where I want to go, but I don't know what's going to unfold that day, which is what makes it an adventure, right? You know, maybe you're going to go to a shop and it's closed, or maybe I'll find a new restaurant that I've never had before. So it's kind of like a combination of organizing, pre-planning, getting everything ready, and then kind of going, well, let's see what happens. I, I don't want it to be the perfect day. I want it to be a real day, something that's like a real exploration. I was trying to figure out, well, like, how can I capture this and put this into a video concept where you guys can kind of come along with me. And, and I was really nervous actually to share it with you guys because I thought, you know, uh, who's going to like, you know, me walking along the sides of the tracks and showing off my favorite rusty bridge. What if no one likes my favorite rusty bridge? and the square air conditioners. I was kind of nervous about that kind of stuff because it doesn't have the big, you know, razzle dazzle of maybe like a really cool tourist location. But I was really happy seeing the responses. A lot of you guys seem to enjoy the same kind of adventuring, which is probably why we are such a like-minded community of people. And so after saying that, I have actually filmed my second Tokyo tours. It is a lot of work. It was like five hours of filming, but lots of adventures unfolded. Some things went my way. Some things didn't go my way. I found lots of wolf cry crowd stickers everywhere. I think it should be ready for June. So depending on when you're watching this video, look forward to the next Tokyo tours. It's gonna be good. So if you're wondering what the King Kogi quests are, they are more like um, slice of life videos that I wanna share with you that I've been gathering for the past couple weeks or months. And this one is gonna be pretty exciting because I went to Osaka, um, or I say Osaka my balls, because it's funny and I'm childish. <laughs> I went to visit a very old friend of mine and we went to um, Universal Studios Japan. I went to the new Mario Brothers thingy, the exhibit. And of course I went to Harry Potter land as usual. So I have some footage from there, not tons because I wanted to enjoy myself with my friend, but at the same time, there was some stuff that I couldn't resist 
capturing. So look forward to that coming up. And there's gonna be some other clips of maybe some biking adventures and some food that I visited, some coffee shops, who knows? There's always a mixture of things that I capture and that's what makes it more of a quest. Outside of that, I have been uh, recovering from being really sick. If you've seen on my stories on YouTube and a little bit on Instagram, I got super sick. I don't know if it was the vid or not, but it certainly felt like it was the vid. But then again, I've had dengue fever and a lot of other illnesses. So it's hard to compare when um, you've been really sick before. You're like, oh, this is really sick, but is it as really sick as dengue fever sick? I don't know. All I know is I completely lost my voice for nine days or so. I couldn't speak at all. I couldn't even sneeze. Like when I sneezed, it was like muted. I was really freaking sick. Uh, and that took about three weeks to recover. So I, I didn't do any editing or filming. I fell so far behind and I felt totally like, I'm a miserable failure. But there was nothing I could do but recover. I wasn't cooking, I wasn't going out, nothing. But I'm starting to feel much better. I think I'm at like 98%. It is rainy season in Japan, so I am quite achy from the changing weather, but I have gotten used to understanding that that's what's going on. And so I feel like when I know what's going on, I feel less stressed out. It's gonna come for you, Martina, as opposed to being like, why am I like this? I think I'm getting a handle on things like my health and organizing how I wanna film things. And if you guys have any commentary and suggestions, you know I love hearing them. If there's some places that you're like, next Tokyo Tours, you know, check out a parfait or like go for coffee or, or drink some craft beer. I'll be like, all right, craft beer it is. You know, let me know what you guys are, are wanting me to adventure around in and I'll see if I can compile some areas that I enjoy. And, and oh yeah, I have been working on memberships for months now. So uh, King Hoagie memberships are either live as we speak or going to be live soon. And I also made a Patreon as well with the, with the same kind of things um, for people that don't want to use the King Hoagie membership on YouTube. You can go to Patreon. I was working so hard on figuring out like, what can I give you guys as a thank you for supporting me? So please check it out if you get the chance. Gosh, it is a windy day. I hope you guys could hear all this. I'm like, my bag just blew over. I think I better wrap it up before uh, it gets uh, insanely windy here. Thank you guys so much for still watching these videos and welcome to all the new people again. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy my upcoming um, videos as they unfold. I am still trying to figure you know, life out and, uh, and I hope that Japan opens up one day so that you guys can come here as well. But enjoy those links in the info box that I'm providing for those videos so you can visit some of these places on your own and, and have your own little King Kogi quest or have your own Tokyo tours. Uh, I'm gonna say keep keeping it cool in the King Kogi village. And I'll see you guys on the internets. Enjoy these quests. Captain Martina out. King Kogi out. Good morning from Osaka, Japan. I am currently at a hotel just outside of Universal Studios, Japan. I have come down to meet a very good friend of mine. I've known her since we were in Korea and she moved to Japan, her and her husband, before I left Korea. And then whenever I came to visit Japan, I'd visit them. I came here the day before by myself. So I just like left the hotel room like do 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 do, like arms swinging to explore the outside of the park. So Universal Studios Japan has um, the inside of the park and then around it is kind of like this little universal city. So it has like a hard rock cafe and eggs and things. And then it's also got lots of Japanese food and like a takoyaki alleyway kind of thing. Cause takoyaki is really big in Osaka. That's the little battered uh, savory pancake balls on the inside is a little piece of octopus taco. I ended up getting ebi shumai and a steamed bun. And then I went to a konbini cause they have tons of them. And I bought a salad and a chicken breast and an egg, two little lemon sours and came back to my room and just like kicked back and uh, I ended up watching Bridgerton season two. Very spicy, but dragged on a little near the end, if I'm being honest. Had to kind of fast forward a couple of the episodes because I was like, oh, this is taking a bit too much time. So I was hoping to like, you know, film a little bit of this so that I could put this into like a King Kogi quest, but it's supposed to rain because there's a typhoon, the first typhoon of the year hitting. So I'm not sure how much I will actually be able to film. But if you see random bits and pieces of, uh, yeah, Universal Studios Japan, you'll understand what is going on. I guess I better get dressed and still in pajamas. I'm in the hotel pajamas. Becky's on her way down. Oh, I said her name, am I allowed to? I guess so. <laughs> and I'm enjoying uh, a coffee, which I made at the hotel because they don't have any anything. Um, a little achy from the bed, did bring my own pillow and in a tragic uh, move, left Kogi <laughs> at home in a tote bag. <laughs> Kogi's gonna kill me. He's gonna be like, wee, wee. He should know that the pillows here are awful and they are not substitutes for him. They're like really huge. They're like brogies, brillos, brogie brillos.
Okay, let me get ready. Popcorn. It's so funny to see formal wear for men, and it's like. <laughs> Oh, the music is so cute! And you can take a picture in the... The warp pipes? Oh my god! It's Bowser. Alright, shall we go? We're going through. The music is amazing. Oh wow! It like goes dark like a warp pipe, for real. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's the floor. It's like the... Are you ready? Whoa. Oh my god, the portrait's not changed. Oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> this is amazing. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Giant we're in Bowser's Castle. Whoa, look at the size of that. Jaws, Tayek. How do you get put your? I'm gonna put it here. Oh! Oh my God! It looks like blood. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
for some uh, ske soba. That's the dipping soba. And this place is um, quite interesting because they do a fish and pork bone broth one. So essentially you choose which one you want. The first one is a normal ske soba. The second one is a spicy one. The third one is just chuka soba. And then you choose your broth. So you've got the uh, agol, which is the, it turns into like chin, <laughs> but with some kind of a fish bone and pork bone. The second one is like a soy sauce and then salt. I got the tokshu ske soba, which comes with char shu, comes with an egg and it comes with nori, seaweed. And you can get different sizes if you want. Apparently it's got quite a unique taste. And I've never been to like an upstairs, an upstairs place before. Oh, they have a side menu too. This is a really original tasting skamen. The broth has like a very little bit of a vinegary-ness to it. I don't want to say vinegar because I'm used to naengmyeon, which has like tons of vinegar, but it's not like necessarily just creamy. You can see it's got like a, it's not a clean broth, as in like it's not like a simple, clear taste. It's got a lot of flavor in there. Like you can see fat on top and you can see it's kind of like cloudy in a way because it's got lots of little bits. And look at the noodles. You can see it like sticking to the noodles, but not super thick. It's not like a mega, mega thick broth. It's very nice and it comes with spinach and a lovely jammy egg. Let's see if I can finish this. Up here is the bike path that I was just on and you can go all the way down and come back onto the street in order to stop at Folgans. It's quite popular, lots of people are always coming here so outside is a bit on the noisy side and it's kind of packed. You've got these like little tiny built-in table seats but uh, I'm pretty happy to enjoy a nice cup of coffee after a, a little bike ride. Nelson Ramirez, Honduras. Blackberry watermelon and dried mango, very exciting and I got a cardamom bun so Norwegian, so not Japanese. I'd also like to mention that I had Sailor Moon socks that got holes in them, so I cut off the bottoms and turned them into palm warmers. Which Pokemon is it? That's Pikachu! You guys. Pikachu! Vending machine. Because why not? Why not?
You guys, this is my ultimate favorite Yaki Emo truck. The Yaki Emos are hontori oishi, so good, and he does magic tricks. He's a magician and a Yaki Emo guy. I had uh, two Yaki Emos from before and they were absolutely fantastic. So I couldn't believe my luck when I saw him again. They are so good, honestly. And you just gotta catch him at random. So he's on Twitter and he's on Instagram, but he's really cool. Go over and say hi. And yeah, after I bought my Yaki Emo, oh my God, I'm so excited to even tell you what Yaki Emo was. Bah. Yaki Emo is like a stone roasted sweet potato. So you can take a sweet potato and you can cook it in the oven or you can try to cook it however you might want and it will cook it, but it'll kind of like steam it, right? Yaki Emo in a truck like this is cooked over these like stones in like this kind of um, coal. It's not coal, but it's like stones that have been warmed up and they um, cause caramelization. So the inside is super soft. The outside has the, the skin on it. And then there's like a caramel layer I have to show you guys, but I'm worried that I'm going to get covered in major sticky fingers. We're going to try it. I'm literally like on my bike. It's <laughs> this is my bike. You guys are on my bike seat, sitting on my bike butt. Here it is. Ooh, it's a hot potato. It's so hot. I can barely touch it. <gasps> oh my God. It's so hot right there. You guys see this here? This is all the sugar, like naturally breaking through from where it's been roasted. Look at that. Oh my God, it's so, so sweet. This is such a wintertime speciality. I can't even begin to tell you. I'm going to burn my skin off, but it's going to be worth it. It's quite hard to find a Yaki Emo mobile nowadays. There was one in Kichijoji that would show up at nighttime and it would only be at like random times. This guy has an Instagram and a Twitter so you can kind of find out where he's gonna be. This is a Thursday. So it's like a Thursday at noon. I was going out to lunch actually. Uh, and I'm actually, that's a lie. I'm going out to eat lunch but I'm going out to film a video and then I was gonna eat lunch but now I'm like, am I gonna eat lunch anymore? Oh. Mm. If I eat this all now, I will be so sticky and I will have no way to clean it up. So we're going to have to put it back together. But I got no. So the moral of the story is if you see a truck at a subway station or driving by and they're going, the one in my neighborhood used to go, they all have like a different song that they do. Just, you just run after them, just like flag them down, which is what I did. I just like ran after them. I, I biked after him and stopped. And then you can just get a Yaki Emo, which is my favorite kind of wintertime snack. It's only in the wintertime, unfortunately. Sometimes you get chestnuts, but I find Yaki Emo to be something that I just can't prepare well at home. It doesn't t taste the same way as the, the slow stone process of it. It's, yeah, it's amazing. And they have different selections. So there's different kinds of sweet potatoes you can get. And so each one will have a different taste, a different caramelization. Like some will be sugarier than the others. Oh, I really wanted to film this for you guys, but I just didn't think I'd ever get the chance. I was like, oh, when am I going to catch the Yaki Emo truck while I have my gear, like my microphone on me? Today was that lucky day. Yeah, Yaki Emo.